Hey y'all, Coach in the Fight here. Got AI with me. And in today's video, we're going to be talking about Deuteronomy 28 and Leviticus 26 and how it applies to the African Americans. I got this question from my neighbor friend and I decided to use this data bank in order to help prove uh, what he really already knew. Just wanted to give him some talking points. But after this short dissertation, there is a story that I had artificial intelligence to create based on a family that learned this information, embraced this message, and then went on to start to read other parts of the Bible and just live it out. So make sure you stay around to the end. Be prepared to leave a comment as we go. Go ahead and hit that like button and make sure you're subscribed. Document title, Scriptural Examination of Deuteronomy 28 and Leviticus 26 in relation to the African descendants of the tribes of Judah introduction. This document provides a comprehensive examination of Deuteronomy 28 and Leviticus 26 in relation to the claim that Africans, particularly African Americans, are descendants of the tribes of Judah. The analysis aims to present scriptural evidence supporting this claim while addressing and rebutting potential counterarguments using strict adherence to biblical texts. 1. Scriptural evidence supporting the claim. Deuteronomy 28 verse 37 and the experience of African descendants. Scripture, you will become a thing of horror, a byword, and an object of ridicule among all the peoples where the Lord will drive you, Deuteronomy 28 verse 37. Supporting argument, this verse describes a condition of widespread scorn and marginalization. If African descendants are from the tribes of Judah, their historical experiences, such as being marginalized and ridiculed, align with this prophecy. This is consistent with Lamentations 2 verse 15, which states, All who pass by clap their hands at you, they hiss and shake their heads at the daughter of Jerusalem. This reflects a similar experience of scorn and ridicule. Deuteronomy 28 verse 64 and the scattering of the tribes. Scripture, then the Lord will scatter you among all nations, from one end of the earth to the other, Deuteronomy 28 verse 64. Supporting argument, this verse speaks to a widespread scattering, which parallels the African diaspora resulting from the transatlantic slave trade. Jeremiah 9 verse 16 also mentions scattering, I will scatter them among the nations that neither they nor their ancestors have known. This supports the idea that the dispersion described in Deuteronomy 28 aligns with the historical scattering of African people. Deuteronomy 28 verse 68 and the return to Egypt. Scripture, the Lord will send you back in ships to Egypt on a journey I said you should never make again, Deuteronomy 28 verse 68. Supporting argument, the term Egypt is used metaphorically to represent a state of oppression. Exodus 20 verse 2 describes Egypt as a place of bondage, I am the Lord your God, who brought you out of Egypt, out of the land of slavery. If Africans are from Judah, the metaphorical return to Egypt could align with their forced transportation to the Americas, similar to returning to a state of bondage. Leviticus 26 verse 33 and the dispersion of the tribes. Scripture, I will scatter you among the nations, and will draw out my sword and pursue you, Leviticus 26 verse 33. Supporting argument, this verse parallels the scattering mentioned in Deuteronomy 28 verse 64 and further supports the idea of a widespread dispersion. Ezekiel 12 verse 15 also reflects this scattering, they will know that I am the Lord, when I disperse them among the nations and scatter them through the countries. This supports the view that the dispersion described could include the African diaspora. 2. Rebuttals to potential counterarguments. Rebuttal to Deuteronomy 28 verse 37 and marginalization. Counterargument. Critics may argue that the experiences of African descendants do not match the specific curses outlined in Deuteronomy 28. Rebuttal. Deuteronomy 30 verse 3 promises restoration after curses, then the Lord your God will restore your fortunes and have compassion on you and gather you again from all the nations where he scattered you. 
This suggests that the experiences of marginalization are part of a larger narrative of dispersion and eventual restoration, aligning with the belief that African descendants are part of this prophetic narrative. Rebuttal to Deuteronomy 28 verse 64 and the African Diaspora Counter-argument, some may argue that the scattering mentioned in Deuteronomy 28 verse 64 is not directly related to the African Diaspora. Rebuttal, Isaiah 11 verses 11 to 12 highlights God's promise to gather the dispersed of Judah and Israel from all nations, in that day the Lord will reach out his hand a second time to reclaim the surviving remnant of his people from Assyria, from Lower Egypt, from Upper Egypt, from Cush, from Elam, from Babylonia, from Hamath and the islands of the Mediterranean. This specificity supports the view that the scattering described could be related to the African diaspora. Rebuttal to Deuteronomy 28 verse 68 and the return to Egypt. Counter-argument. Critics might argue that the metaphorical use of Egypt in Deuteronomy 28 verse 68 does not accurately describe the conditions faced by Africans during the slave trade. Rebuttal. Revelation 11 verse 8 uses Egypt symbolically to represent oppression. Their bodies will lie in the public square of the great city, which is figuratively called Sodom and Egypt, where also their Lord was crucified. This metaphorical use of Egypt reinforces the interpretation that returning to Egypt symbolizes a condition of oppression, aligning with the forced transportation and bondage experienced by African descendants. Rebuttal to Leviticus 26 verse 33 and dispersion. Counter-argument, some may argue that Leviticus 26 verse 33 does not specifically refer to the African diaspora. Rebuttal, Deuteronomy for verse 27 also addresses dispersion, the Lord will scatter you among the peoples, and only a few of you will survive among the nations to which the Lord will drive you. The repetition of the theme of dispersion in both Deuteronomy and Leviticus supports the view that the dispersion of the tribes includes the experiences of African descendants. Conclusion this document provides scriptural support for the interpretation that the curses and prophesies in Deuteronomy 28 and Leviticus 26 align with the historical experiences of African descendants of the tribes of Judah. By addressing potential counterarguments with relevant biblical references, it upholds the interpretation that these ancient prophesies may indeed reflect the experiences of African Americans. This approach emphasizes the importance of a scriptural basis for understanding these texts and their relevance to contemporary issues. Okay, again, that dissertation was created using uh, ChatGPT, which claims to be artificial intelligence, but it's really not because it doesn't have the ability to learn anything, but it is a great source for data, as you can see. Now, in this next video, I had it to animate a story that a family found this document and then went on to read the Bible and uh, learn and live out what it says. So leave a comment as we go and I'll be back in a minute. Title, A Path of Faith, From Revelation to Transformation. Scene 1, The Revelation. Setting, A Cozy Study Room. The room is filled with books, a large wooden desk, and a single window letting in the soft light of the early morning. At the desk, David, a middle-aged man with a contemplative expression, sits reading a document titled, Scriptural Examination of Deuteronomy 28 and Leviticus 26 in relation to the African descendants of the tribes of Judah. David's voiceover, as I delve into these scriptures, the connections between ancient prophecies and our current experiences become startlingly clear. Could this truly be a sign for us today? David reads passages aloud, highlighting key verses and taking notes. The room is quiet except for the sound of rustling paper and the occasional murmur of David's voice. Scene 2, The Revelation Deepens. Setting, David's living room. The room is now dimly lit, with candles flickering softly. David is sitting with his wife, Rachel, and their teenage daughter, Elena. The family is gathered around a table with an open Bible and the document. David, Rachel, Elena, I've been studying these scriptures, and the parallels between the curses in Deuteronomy 28 and Leviticus 26 and our historical experiences are compelling. It feels like a call for us to realign our lives with these covenants. 
Rachel, it's a lot to take in. David, how do you propose we act on this revelation? Elena, what does it mean for us, practically? Scene 3, The Decision Setting, a church setting, with a warm and welcoming atmosphere. David, Rachel, and Elena sit in a pew, listening to a sermon about living according to biblical covenants and embracing the principles of righteousness and justice. Pastor, the covenants in the Bible guide us toward a life of obedience, justice, and compassion. They call us to reflect on our actions and align ourselves with God's will. David's voiceover, the pastor's words resonate deeply. It's not just about understanding these scriptures but living them out. David leans over to Rachel, his eyes determined. David, we need to make a change. We need to live according to these principles. Our actions must reflect the covenants we've learned about. Scene 4, the transformation begins. Setting, David's home, with a focus on different areas of their lives, their community involvement, family interactions, and personal practices. Community outreach. David, Rachel, and Elena are seen organizing a community event, offering support and resources to underprivileged families. The event is filled with laughter, sharing, and a sense of unity. We're embracing the call to serve and uplift others, reflecting the justice and compassion described in the covenants. Family life. At home, the family prays together, reads the Bible, and discusses how to apply its teachings in their daily lives. They also focus on supporting each other and resolving conflicts with patience and understanding. Rachel, our home is becoming a place of peace and alignment with God's will. We're growing together in faith. Personal changes. David is seen making conscious choices about his work and personal life, aligning his decisions with the values of justice and righteousness. Elena, I'm learning to make choices that reflect our faith and the teachings we've embraced. Scene 5, Reflection and Hope. Setting, back in the cozy study room, now filled with a sense of accomplishment and peace. David sits at his desk, reflecting on the journey. David's voiceover, the path we've taken has not been easy, but it has brought us closer to living in line with the covenant of the Bible. It's a journey of faith, transformation, and hope. Rachel and Elena join David at the desk, sharing a moment of gratitude and joy. Rachel, we've seen how these changes have impacted our lives and those around us. It's a testament to living according to God's promises. Elena, it feels like we're truly part of something greater, making a difference in our own lives and in the community. The family embraces, smiling with a sense of fulfillment and purpose. Scene 6 A Moving Forward Setting, the family walks together in a vibrant park, enjoying the beauty of nature and the sense of community around them. David's voiceover, we continue to strive for a life that reflects the covenants, knowing that each step we take brings us closer to the fulfillment of God's promises. The scene fades out with the family walking hand in hand, hopeful and committed to their journey of faith. End credits, the screen displays a message, embrace the journey of faith. Align your life with God's covenants and find purpose and fulfillment in his promises. Note, the animated story above reflects a journey of faith and transformation based on scriptural insights. It aims to inspire and encourage living in alignment with biblical covenants through personal and community changes. All right, y'all, there's the end of it. I um, hope you got something out of this video. If you did, talk about it down in the comment section. I'd like to hear your experiences or your ideas. And again, make sure you hit that like button and the share button. And I'll see you in the comment section. Shalom.